Okay. So, I'm going to try this one last time. And if somebody answers their phone, I'm going to shoot someone. Okay. You're acting. I know you're not on the phone. Anyway, so, another episode of the Jake Williams Show. Thanks, Mom, for listening. My only listener. But anyway, uh, to my right, I have the very talented and... That's about all I can say about him. He's not a very good person. At least not to me. I'm really not, but it's okay. I still love you, kind of, <laughs> sort of. Not really. Anyway, this is Xavier Gibson. Um, he was supposed to be my first guest, but... Uh, but you lied to me. I lied. Because that's show business, kid. That's show business. X, how are you feeling today? I am feeling fan-freaking-tastic. How are you? Well, um, I'm alright. I mean, are you checking your phone again? No, I'm not checking my phone again. <laughs> All right, so let's just get this out of the way. Um, you're from Georgia, right? Yes. Why are you in Nebraska? I spent the majority of my life in Nebraska. Went to high school here, Bellevue West, go T-Birds. Uh, went to college here, Peru State College. Yeah, Bobcats. Okay. Which we will talk more about that later. Um, so I actually moved oh, yeah. to Georgia about nine years ago. Yeah. And so I consider myself a Southern Midwesterner now who's being unprofessional. I listen to the whole thing. You consider yourself a Southern Midwesterner. I've heard this story a billion times. They have it. You're talking to them. The internet people. I'm talking to you. So anyway, uh, people that don't know you, you're a singer. Um, you're a pretty good one. I mean, you know. Uh, I'm just kidding. You're a great singer. Uh, <laughs> the face you give me. You're a good singer. Um, so what uh, was your inspiration to be a singer, um, what what were your inspirations growing up for that choice? Um, honestly, the inspiration was my mom. Uh, I am adopted, and my adopted mother, uh, she used to quiz me on different artists. I had to, I had to guess who was singing which song, guess the song title, and whatnot, um, all by just listening. And she was one that encouraged me to actually continue singing. Um, I remember the day that I decided to, to start doing it like for real, for real. I was singing, I was like maybe eight years old. It was my mom and my older sister and myself. We were going to the park and Whitney Houston came on and I sang, I will always love you. Perfect. And yes, no I, am, I am a man, uh, but I sang it perfect. And my sister my sister told me to open my mouth, and I was like, okay, that's weird. And then she's like, yep, you got the Thompsons of Whitney Houston. And from then on, I've been singing ever since. Is that like a thing? Is that a tonsil thing? Like it bigger... is a thing. Oh, really? Have you ever looked at Whitney Houston's tonsils? Oh, yeah, I forgot to bring this guy in because he was busy on his phone. Uh, this is Adam Jenner, who also be on this interview, and I'll ask him some questions. And I've also... Sorry, you're at the only interview I got scheduled. Like, I'm very busy yeah, now. Yeah, I doubt it. Um... <laughs> This is important because I have some questions for Xavier that can be fielded by both guys. That's why I have asked these questions. You're um, used to fielding guys, though, aren't you? All the time. Um, so the next question I'm going to bring up is... What was it like to... Um, this is for both guys here. Adam's an actor. Former actor. Are you still acting? I don't know. Retired. Retired, okay. He's living off Social Security now. Um, <laughs> not really. Um, so anyway, what was it like for you guys to kind of be the pioneers of a, like a theater scene at Peru State? How did, that, how did that process happen, and what was it like? And Either guy can start here. We had no intention of being pioneers. I mean, honestly, at least it's for me. I'm just, Your words. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the way it worked is a theater program was starting, and I mean, personally, I like theater. I wanted to do theater. I wanted to act. I wanted to get on stage and and do stuff, and this is my opportunity. I mean, I didn't expect to, you know, to start taking some leadership roles and start actually doing stuff to help the program. Honestly, I was just trying to have some fun. For me, it was a little bit different, actually. I... I was music before theater. I actually was going to Peru for music marketing. And, uh, you know, it was one of those deals I saw. I took uh, acting class with this clown. 
<laughs> and uh, that's how they met, guys. pretty much that's how we <laughs> met. Um, and you know, I honestly the only reason why I took it is because it was easy. I mean, I could do this no problem. So acting's not easy. Not not at all. Um, <laughs> I was like, was he bragging but, about his acting? Uh, it was one of those deals where we were forced to to audition for, well, not forced, but actually, yeah, kind of forced to audition. Coerced and, is the word. Coerced, excuse me. No, they, and they tied I said, your arms behind your back. And, and I said, you know, act. Sure, right, whatever, fine. And I got the part, and I was like, you know, I don't have anything else going on. <laughs> <laughs> might as well, might as well accept the role. Uh, my very first role, I was a British police officer. Called uh, Vernon Paul. Was that in uh, No Sex Please? Yes, No Sex Please were British. I actually saw um, that play. And from then on, from then on, that's just how it's been. Like I kind of fell in love with it. Uh, I still think he just needed an extra black person in there because I was the only black person. So you know, token black. Black. you were the yeah. token black exactly. Guy. So affirmative action in the theater, pretty much. So, but needless to say, I fell in love with it. Okay. Um... I'm going to toss a question to Adam. What's up? You used to be a model. So, yeah. give me that explanation <laughs> of that experience. It, I was never a model. <laughs> you were a male model. I was just a very good looking guy in front of a camera. That's all he has to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, was never a male model, and I will never put that on my resume. But I do have some very good looking pictures. Yeah, like really good headshots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's another question both of you guys can field. Um, all three of us were in an improv troupe at one point um, called Hotel Rendezvous. And what, what made you want to do an improv troupe? At least try to do one. And right to the phones. Um, pretty much. It's one of those deals where, as I said, I, I moved here um, a year ago. I After I graduated, I actually did some, actually, yeah, I can't say professional acting in Brownville, uh, Nebraska. Uh, it was a repertory theater. And I just, that, that made me fall in love with theater even more. I actually did it for two summers in a row. Um, and so I moved up here uh, with Adam. And, you know, the three of us, we were just kind of sitting at Big Sal's and, you know, just kind of hanging out. Uh, and we, Adam and I have been talking about how we missed theater, how we just loved it, um, and how we want to do something. And we were reminiscing about our old improv troupe when we were in Peru. And the three of us just kind of sat there and were like, you know, well, we should start an improv troupe. And that's pretty much how it got started you know we just adam and i missed theater so much we wanted to do something and so we decided to go for that does that sound pretty accurate it's very accurate believe it believe it it happened it's now defunct guys don't get too excited i was just the third guy i was just there um uh, another question i was gonna ask um because you were just talking about it when you were talking about uh, Hotel Vaughn. What, prob- what was like your fondest memory of being in the Brownville Theater? Fondest memory? Um, See, I got him a hard one. <laughs> it's not necessarily a hard one. I just I have so many I have so many great memories. I have personal memories, but then I have professional memories. Professional memories would be. Um, Everybody knows that I can sing, and the last time that I was in Brownville, I didn't get cast in the musical, and everybody was upset. Everybody was like, why weren't you in the musical? That doesn't make any sense. Why are you not singing? Like, I'm actually upset. This is stupid. And then I actually talked to the director about it, and he said, look, this is the reason why. First of all, everybody knows you can sing. You could do a musical, you know, with your eyes closed. No problem. Uh, So I wanted to challenge you. I wanted to give you a, a... role that is a lot harder than um, than what you've done before and ultimately that's that's what I did I actually played a boss in one toe in the grave and uh, it was really it was really it was a challenging experience for me but after getting into that character I realized you know that 
my director was right and he turned me into a better actor for not giving me something that I was comfortable with, which is a musical and challenging me as, as an actor. Um, so that's the professional personal is the friendships that were made. Uh, you know, my 2012 year, uh, I made friends that I'm still friends with and it's mm-hmm. almost 2015 and still really good friends. I've sang at a few, a few of their weddings already. Um, we've all hung out. We keep in touch all the time. It's just great because you just create a family. Mm-hmm. Oh. So that, 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 that already, because we've talked about how you feel about theater. Mm-hmm. So that just increased the love for theater, made it. Yeah, it uh, honestly. Doing theater in Peru was great. It was fun times. It was awesome. But it, I didn't start considering myself an actor until I went to Brownville, until I've actually professionally been on stage multiple times, have seen seen what being on stage does to people. Actor's um, still a heavy word. Stop being a dick. Um, it was like a serious, my, nice my conversation moment, and then you just ruined it. <laughs> um, but just seeing... Seeing how being on stage can change lives, whether it brings up memories, whether it, you know, takes people on a journey, um, it was just a great, a great experience. It just made me fall deeper and deeper in love with, uh, with theater. So, I mean, that's why you do it. Exactly. That's why anybody does anything. Adam, what's up? You back in here? I'm working. We got an audience too. It's like a live show. Of people in here. You guys should applaud. We're gonna do Applaud, you're a live audience. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Not in tune at all, but I'll take it. I like the whistle right there. So, uh, you were in, uh, Adam, you were in a, in you were in yourself. It was a really weird role. Um, <laughs> you were a that part of a, I don't remember the name of it, because I did it with you. It was a talent thing. Oh, the voiceover thing for the... The monkey things? Or? No, the the one before that, a long time ago. Oh, you arts. went to Florida. The arts, arts thing. Yeah. Kind of walk us through that experience. It's a good experience. Uh, basically, what they do is they go across the country looking for talent, and then um, the, whoever they pick, they send to Florida where they got a showcase. They got a whole bunch of guys from Nickelodeon, MGM, uh, Disney, of course, and then a bunch of singing and modeling stuff that I don't know much about. I was more into the acting, obviously. We know. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. Anyway, what I got picked, obviously. Um, went over, performed, met a couple agents, you know, and uh, that's it. Had a good time. Got in the audience members. Hit another. Slamming them back. But keep going. Oh, God. Got it. Uh, Would you do it again? Yeah, I'm planning on it. On it. Yeah, I got I got an email from them. They're trying to they're going really cheap on me now. We could follow that up. You were also in Scranton. What was Scranton like? Nothing like the office. Nothing. Maybe no party like a Scranton party. Scranton party stop. Oh, they do. Oh. <laughs> I went to a few. <laughs> they were a good time. Um, and then you you went to New York as well. Yep, auditioned for a Burger King commercial actually. You didn't tell me that before. Nothing you came didn't of tell it. me that before either. Nothing yeah. came of it. Well, I'm your best All friend. this other stuff I knew about. And then well, you know. there, was, there was just a moment that the lady basically said, all right, uh, this is your resume. This is her resume. You need more t- You need more training. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. That's rough. Nah, that's New York. And then she pitched her classes, so I'm not... So she... <laughs> you need work. Uh... Yeah, she was teaching classes, and she was trying to pitch classes to people who didn't make the audition. Oh, was so... at all for her? Or was it just an automatic... Hey, who's running the podcast here? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I walked Inmates in. Inmates are running the asylum. I walked in, and she was like, you need more training. No, I did the commercial, but... Or the audition. But it wasn't my best. First New York audition, you get nervous. This could be a question filled by either guy. I'm just kidding, both guys. Uh, what, to date... Is your proudest acting credit? John Paul Murat. Why? I love that character. Like, I love... I, I do a lot of comedy. 
um, when I act. But that serious role with John Paul Murat was my absolute favorite. Just getting into his head, actually committing to a role. Please. He sees that doing it with the eyes. Please. Do it faithfully. Your favorite professor told me I was amazing. Professor Rick? Edgar. He's motioning, he's motioning masturbation. It's funny. <laughs> It's an audio podcast. They can't see that. <laughs> That's the point. So it was because you enjoyed getting inside that character, and I fully committed to that role. And people's reactions showed. People loved me. That was the best part of that that show. How was it like sitting in a bathtub for two hours? It got cold. Was I was, like, were you soggy? Is my question. Yeah, very, <laughs> very. Hands were pruny. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The first time, the first time we did it was awful. Because we didn't understand it. We filled like half full of water. So it got really cold. Like icy it, was cold. Middle, it was middle of winter. Like they tried to heat it up, but it was middle of winter. It shit got cold fast and it sucked. Okay, uh, Xavier, your proudest acting credit so far. When I played Jean Paul Marat. Yeah, I'm just playing. Oh, so it's um. like it's a schizophrenic <laughs> thing. Yes. Um, no. Honestly, Not I have. <laughs> I have two two proud moments. I know you asked for one, but I, I have two. Um, the first one was the first one is gonna have to be Pippin when I was Pippin. Um, that was that was a defining moment for me, just because that's my first musical that I've actually been uh, the the star in. Um, and honestly. I overcame one of my biggest fears. Uh, you know, I know you guys you guys can't see me, but, you know, I'm a little on the husky side. And I had to go shirtless. And that's something that I was... That looks really suggestive. <laughs> Why does he have to, like... <laughs> that is something that I was really, right. really self-conscious about. Right. Um, and wasn't sure if I'd be able to do it. But, you know, I kind of, I just said, you know, screw it. In, in theater, you're going to have to do some things that you are not that you don't want to do. You're going to have to overcome some things. And that was a big accomplishment for me. So that was one. The other one was when I... What the hell, man? I'm recording right now. Sorry. The other one was when I did play... When I did play uh, the boss in One Toe in the Grave. Um, that was pretty fun just because a lot of... Just that character isn't me. Like, I had to be really... Uh, like authoritative and really, you know, strong jawed and you know nothing can affect me. You know what the hell's going on and uh, type deal, but then also have a sense of vulnerability, a sense of goofiness and whatnot. And it's it's really challenging to be able to play both of those roles in one character. Um, and once again, that is something that made me grow as an actor as well. So There you go. I like his answers. He's opening up here. I get you drunk, you'll open it up. What? Disrespectful, get off your phone. Okay. Somebody's got to be honest. Okay, uh, this is another question for Adam. So, Shy Duo reunion, is that ever going to happen? Absolutely, it's going to happen. For those that don't know, Shy Duo was a YouTube... Well, it's not even a YouTube video. It was a video... We were trying to clean the bathroom, and then we heard us. We were listening to music, and I played a broom as a guitar. I sang in a razor. And we were like, "This is a great idea. We should put this online." Nobody watched it. I'm just kidding. Everybody watched it on our Facebook. A lot of them was like, "Why did I watch this?" or "What did I just watch?" <laughs> <laughs> this is something you don't share with other people. All right. This is a very private kind of thing, and. So yeah, should I do it? That's coming back. Look for that, people. Um, all two fans. So future projects. Uh, I'll start with Xavier here. What um, projects are on the horizon for Mr. Gibson? I am going to become a professional stripper. Oh. What do you mean? What, what would your name be? Sensual Chocolate? Yes. Um, no. Mark no, Henry. That's what it would be. Um, really, I actually, I mean, I have a, I have a lot of things going on. Um. I, I'm in an acapella group, and we're going to start doing some things here pretty soon. Um, Adam and I are trying to get uh, get a, another improv troupe off, off the ground. 
Um, and I think one of the one of the the biggest things that I'm really really excited for, and I hope it happens. Uh, I'm actually I actually got offered a job to teach hip hop at Nar High uh, here in Lincoln, and I'm planning on taking up that offer. So uh, hopefully in January I will be teaching hip hop to uh, high school kids ages, uh, you know, or from grades ninth to twelfth. So I. How does one teach hip hop? That's the question. You mean how does one teach hip hop? I don't know how you would teach hip hop. How does one breathe? Maybe. How does one drink? How does one blink his own eyes? It just happens. I just teach it. it flows. That is one hell of an audition tape right there. If you want to learn how to do hip hop, Adam, future projects. What? Future projects. Future projects? Um. Well, I'm going to get back into acting, but I just haven't had the opportunity. In the meantime, I write novels about love. No, you don't. Shut up. I read your stuff. It's very depressing. It's supposed to be. <laughs> Dark is what I do. That's why his best friend I, is black. I was going to say, there's a joke there, but... What? So, that's it? This is not I'm, Warriors. Yeah, I'm doing some acting, doing some other stuff. Gonna get back into acting. Gonna audition for some stuff. Train myself back up before I go into. Uh... You gonna have a Rocky montage? Oh, well, obviously. That'd be awesome. But yeah. Slow mo. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. be your trainer if that's what you need. X is gonna get. Oh, whatever. I could shut up. All right, lightning round. Nobody trusts a white guy to train him anymore. It's... Thank you. Racist. Yep. Um, You're a white man. That's hey, tell me, tell me what happened to Karate Kid. Was the did the kid who was trained by the white guy win, or the kid who was trained by the Asian win? That's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm actually training you to fight. I'm training you to show emotion. In all fairness, Asians. I don't know. I it was a joke there. I lost it. Well, on the way, right, <laughs> lightning round. Favorite artist, Xavier. Musically, yes. Uh, Luther Vandross. Justin Timberlake. Uh, you got to be kidding me. You're not serious, right? No, I'm not judging you, cause you <laughs> because of JT. But, because I never know. I've never asked you that question. Is that really your answer? I don't have a favorite You got to, just gun to your head. You have to pick one. I just gave you Justin Timberlake. All right, Justin want? Timberlake. Moving on. Jesus Christ. Favorite actor. I know yours, so Xavier, go first. Michael Jai White. You. Chris Pine. It's Tom Cruise. Right now it's Chris Pine. Right now it's Chris Pine, but... Tom All Cruise. time. It's not Cruz, but Chris Pine, I love him right now. Too. Adam, what would be your dream job? Acting in Hollywood. That's it? You got nothing better than that? No, I'm just kidding. It's a great job. Dream job, Xavier. Honestly, dream job is anything that has to do with music, theater, or ministry. All together. That'd be one awesome show. Dude. What? Right there, on this podcast, you just started a new show, right there. It's going to be a, uh, some kind of ministry show, musically. I don't know what it would be, but it'd be pretty sweet. I would, I would see it. I would pay for it. Favorite movie? It would be cool, wouldn't it? Am I the only one that would be enjoy, like, enjoy that? I'm sure Adam skepticism. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, come back to me. Go to X. Favorite movie? Don't be a menace to South Central while, while drinking your juice in the hood. Classic. It's a classic. The Wayne's Brothers. I see that, and I counter you with American History X. Oh. <laughs> well, what? This podcast just got real. <laughs> that's, that's probably not a good I thing. I see your American History X, and I raise you Malcolm X. Oh. Hmm. Don't, don't make the joke you want to make. I can't, I, I can't think of it. I know where my mind's going, and I'm not going to let it go there. <laughs> I know one. So that's it? American History X? No, I <laughs> No idea? Come on, gun to your head again. Uh, uh, a, uh, a time to kill. Really? It's a gun to my head! <laughs> Stop putting guns in my head, you won't get this shit! That's the point of lightning rounds, it's supposed I, to I, I can't think of that movie with Tom Cruise out. Cats or dogs, Xavier? Dogs. Dogs? I'm right. allergic to cats. I didn't. I forgot. Me too. If you weren't allergic, still be dog dogs. Um, any more lightning wire questions I can think of off the top of my head? Favorite color? 
Green. Blue. Um, is that your stomach? It is. We should get you something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> what are doing? All right, that's it. Give your stomach pretty much wrapped up this podcast. Thank you, Xavier, for uh, opening up and giving me a good interview. Adam, so, you, you need to work on that. Keep me drunk. Yeah, I, this one's on you. This, you know what? I'll do another. <laughs> I'll do a whole other one. I'll get drunk too. It'll be the drunk podcast of Adam opening up. And it was great uh, guest starring on this. Yeah, Andrew, thanks for being an audience. <laughs> Jenny, you were quiet. You were a good audience member. You caused problems. Well, well I'm, they're not just drink faster. I'm tired of you. All right, thank everybody listening in the room because probably the only people that hear it. Um. And where, where can people...